Software in the loop and hardware in the loop are two powerful and complementary concepts to test your embedded device early and extensively and therefore increase product quality significantly. In this video, we show you how you can achieve this with vector tools. Hi, I'm Philip from the R&D department for test and simulation tool development at Vector. My focus is on the areas medical, railway and industrial. In this video, I will present you the concepts of software in the loop and hardware in the loop with Vector tools and how they can be used in combination in your development and testing process of your embedded devices. At Vector, we provide tools for many different development steps of embedded systems ranging from PCDIN Plus for static code analysis and Vectorcast for unit and integration testing to Canoo for system level tests. For the system test stage, Canoo can either be used for the software system test in a virtual environment or the system test of the final hardware device. These two approaches are called software in the loop and hardware in the loop or SIL and HIL for short. In this video, I want you to show the capabilities of Canoo for performing SIL and HIL tests and simulations. Now, what is Canoo? Canoo is a tool for all development and testing tasks ranging from SIL to HIL. Imagine you have a system under test, I will use the abbreviation SUT from now on, which is some embedded device. This could be a microcontroller or a microprocessor or a combination of multiple of these systems. Your SUT will most probably have some digital or analog IOs or serial interfaces like UART, SPI or I2C, which are used to transfer sensor values to your device or to switch actuator states. Moreover, your SUT might have a network or bus interface to other controllers or devices, for example Ethernet, EtherCAT or CAN. Let's take a look at the Hill case for such a system first. The idea of Canoo is to simulate both the sen sensor and actuator and the network or bus environment of your SUT in order to make it think that it is operating in its intended target environment. For this, we can either use Vector Hill hardware like the VT or VIA system to access the sensor actuator part or different network or bus interfaces to access the corresponding network or bus interfaces of your system. Canoo allows you to stimulate your system and measure its reaction to the stimulus. This procedure can also be executed with automated tests, which can be designed in our test design tool VTest Studio. Note that Canoo has a lot of different open interfaces to couple third-party hardware and third-party libraries and tools to it, including MATLAB Simulink, LabVIEW and Python. For software in the loop tests of your system, this procedure is basically the same, just that the SUT consists of pure software and the access to it takes place with a virtual interface. This means that no real hardware interfaces are required and these tests can be run very early during development. Nevertheless, all tests and simulations in Canoo can be identical for both SIL and HIL, which make them, makes them reusable, which saves you a lot of development time. SIL and HIL can be applied to any embedded system or network of embedded systems with defined inputs and outputs, which is displayed in a generic form on this slide. In order to make the SIL and HIL development and testing process with Canoo more graspable, we developed an ECG demonstrator based on a PCB with a microcontroller. Our ECG demonstrator is an easy example to showcase the aforementioned concepts. It contains an analog sensor, the ECG pads, which measure the ECG signal of the patient. The sensor signal is processed by the so-called ECG core software, which contains the algorithms and application logic to create the necessary outputs. That means a digital output to trigger an alarm if some arrhythmia is detected and an Ethernet output to send heart rates to an external monitor via a protocol like, for example, SDC, OPCUA or DDS. Let's take a closer look at the internal software architecture to understand which software components are tested with SIL and which are tested with HIL. To do so, let me introduce the data flow in the ECG device. At the inputs, the analog ECG sensor data is processed by an analog digital converter, which writes integer values to a register in order to represent the time series of the measured input. This register 
is read out by hardware and platform dependent software. Here, this piece of software is called hardware driver. This hardware driver will pass the time series through an I.O. abstraction layer to the main part of the device's software, the ECG core software. This software consists of algorithms to detect heartbeats from the input signal, calculate heart rates and to analyze the signal for potential arrhythmia. Based on this analysis, the core software will switch the alarm to on or off via the digital output pin or send heart rates to monitor via Ethernet. For this, it passes the alarm and heart rate values through an I.O. abstraction layer to hardware and platform-dependent software, for example, a transfer protocol or an Ethernet controller driver. With software in the loop, we test the whole core software on a system level as a running application by virtually injecting input values and virtually measuring output values. Thereby, we cut out the hardware and platform-dependent part of the software. This allows us to test the core software early during development on system level without the need for actual hardware. This enables testing even when hardware is not available and to reuse the software and tests for future hardware generations. Additionally, debugging of code becomes much easier as hardware-related issues can be excluded at this stage and it becomes easier to maintain the software. The hardware and platform-specific part is then tested later in the hardware-in-the-loop phase on the final target hardware, where the core software has already been extensively tested during the SIL phase. Be aware that this approach requires a modular code architecture with clear separation of application logic, transport protocol logic and hardware-specific code. There are different parts of SIL testing with Canoo during the transition to Hill where more and more parts of the final on-target software are gradually added to the system under test. This allows for clear error localization and for you to gain trust in your code. In these images, the blue rectangles represent software parts of the final software, which are replaced by auto-generated SIL adapter software to connect Canu and the SUT. The different SIL phases start with the so-called on-host SIL method, where the transfer protocol and the hardware-dependent software are cut out from the SUT and the tests are executed on your host PC or server. In the on-host SIL with virtual network phase, the transfer protocol, which could be OPC UA, DDS or a can OpenStack, is added to the SUT and tested as well. Before moving on to the hill test, there is another possible intermediate step called on-target SIL. At this stage, the tests are executed on the target hardware, but sensor values are injected virtually, for example, by a hardware debugger interface. In the example, in the image, the outputs of the target are as they will be on the final device. These output pins are connected to a hill hardware, which allows for an isolated test of the actuator drivers. The same procedure is also possible the other way around to test sensor drivers. Obviously, they can be arbitrarily mixed to test individual inputs or outputs. The last step of the system level tests is the hill phase, where you test the whole device with its final software. Let's take a deeper look into some of the different phases and how they work. For example, the on-host SIL phase. The idea of this phase is to simulate the ECG input signal in Canu and inject the sensor values virtually into the core software of the running ECG application. Moreover, the alarm actuator and patient monitor that receive the alarm states and heart rates are simulated in Canu. The middleware that it use, is used to connect Canu and the SUT is called SILKit, an open source library provided by Vector to couple different SIL environments. The hardware and platform dependent part of the software is replaced by an auto-generated piece of software which automatically provides the connection to Canu and the transfer of input and output data between the SUT and our tool. The auto-generated code is the so-called SIL adapter. This SIL adapter is compiled together with the ECG core software for the SIL testing phase. The virtual injection and measurement of input and output values now allows for early system level tests, 
much easier debugging and also for the introduction of virtual time. Introduction of virtual time allows to make tests run much faster than in real time and also to slow down the execution time for debugging and monitoring purposes. You might ask yourself, how is the SIL adapter generated? The only thing you have to do is to model the inputs and outputs of your system under test with our domain-specific interface description language VCDL. This language describes which kind of data flows into the SUT and which kind of data flows out of the SUT. In case of the ECG, we have a time series of int32 values as input for our ECG software. This is modeled by the keyword provided for the variable data in 32 ECG amplitude. The communication direction is from the perspective of CANU. The output of the ECG core software are the current and averaged heart rate and the alarm, which are consumed from the perspective of CANU. Now this VCDL file is enough to model our simple ECG system and is used for an automated generation of the SIL adapter, which will then contain variables with the same name as in the VCDL file, for example, the ECG amplitude. SIL adapters are available, for example, in C++ or Python. These variables and methods in the SIL adapter can be used to easily instrument the I.O. layer of the system under test. The ECG contains a function to read out the sensor values from the ADC registers. This function is implemented by hardware-specific code on the target hardware. For SIL testing, however, this function can be implemented by a call to the SIL adapter. Similarly, outputs, which are labeled as consumed values in the VCDL and CANU, can be written in the SUT. The SIL adapter offers multiple ways to simulate inputs, outputs, and also hardware interrupts. Now let's switch to the tool to demonstrate what this looks like. Here you can see the source code of the ECG device. It contains functions like read ECG sample, a function which will read out the sensor values measured by the ECG pads. The function will read out the register which is written to by the analog digital converter. It does so by using a platform or hardware specific implementation, the function hardware read ECG sample. This function is implemented on the final device by highly hardware and platform specific code, which you can see here. It is obvious that this code is highly hardware specific by looking at lines like this, where you have a function call like ADC1 get raw. In the software in the loop case, however, the function hardware read ECG sample is implemented in a much more simple way, which you can see here. The function is simply implemented by returning the variable ECG amplitude, which comes from the auto generated SIL adapter. Now, this is a way to instrument your I.O. layer of the ECG device to be able to test it in a virtual environment. Now let's start the virtual ECG device and see how we can test it with CANU. Now let's switch to CANU. CANU has a highly customizable user interface. I customized the user interface for the special use case of our ECG device. Let's start the measurement in CANU. After starting the measurement, we can start the patient ECG signal input simulation by, for example, replay of patient data by using a MATLAB model or by using um, a Python model. We just replay recorded patient data here. Now you can see in the upper left the replay of a patient signal of a healthy patient. After some time, the SUT, so the virtual ECG device, answers by sending back the current heart rate, the averaged heart rate, and the heart rate alarm. We can confirm this by seeing here in Visual Studio Code the averaged heart rate and the alarm state, which are sent to CANU, being printed out by the SUT. Now we can see that we inject from CANU a healthy patient signal, and we have 
no alarm from the SUT. That means the SUT, the SUT can tell we have no problems, no arrhythmia uh, with the current heartbeat. But now we want to detect, is it possible that the ECG detects that there are unhealthy signals or that suddenly arrhythmia starts? We can test it by just clicking simulate emergency and a, a signal containing arrhythmia is replayed and we can see that suddenly the alarm turns on. That means the virtual ECG device actually detects there's, that there's arrhythmia in the ECG signal and it works as intended. Now we can also test that if we're going back to a healthy signal, does the alarm switch off in a reasonable time? Yes, it does. So our virtual ECG device seems to behave as intended. Now what I just did can also be fully automated at a later stage of development by automated tests. However, these tests, which you can design by VTest Studio, can take quite a long time. That's why we want to speed them up, which we can only do in the software in the loop case. In this specific example, I can actually switch them up, speed them up by a factor of 100. Now I will start the measurement again and the time will run 100 times faster than real time. You can also see this on the lower right of the window. Now I can switch to the tab tests and start the selected tests. You can actually see that they all passed, so our ECG device behaves as intended. The tests I just showed were designed in VTest Studio, which is our test design editor. Here you have the possibility to design tests by using a tabular approach, also by using a graphical or model-based approach to write tests, or also a code-based approach, or even a mix of all three. Moreover, you can link your test cases to your requirements, which you can import from your favorite ALM tool. One fact that I want to mention, the automated SIL tests that I have just shown can not only be executed on the developer desktop, but they can also be run in a headless fashion with Canoo for Software Server Edition on Linux and Windows servers in order to integrate them in your CI pipeline. After having system tested your core software on host in a virtual environment, for example on your PC or on a server, you might want to directly move to Hill. But there are ways to gradually include hardware dependencies, which are hard to simulate into your SUT. Also, you could include parts of your hardware drivers as well to test them one by one together with the application. This can be achieved by the on-target SIL approach of Canoo using Canoo's hardware debugger binding. In this approach, the Canoo simulations of the input signal, alarm and monitor, as well as the automated tests can remain exactly the same. The only difference is that the SIL adapter is now compiled for and run on the target hardware. It receives and sends the sensor and actuator values via a hardware debug probe like Sega or Lauterbach instead of the SIL kit. Of course, this approach can be combined with Hill hardware like the Vector VT system or VIO system. Those systems are scalable Hill systems with different cards for analog, digital or serial I.O. access of the system under test. For this ECG, this could mean that the ECG input signal is injected virtually via a hardware debug probe and the SIL adapter but the alarm and Ethernet output is captured via Hill hardware. This enables isolated automated tests of the hardware-specific code for the physical output of the device. The last step in our development is the hardware-in-the-loop test, where the final ECG device with the final software is tested. This includes all different hardware-dependent parts. Again, the simulations and tests developed in the preceding SIL step can remain the same and we save a lot of development time and costs. In the Hill phase, the analog sensor input is generated using our VT system and the digital actuator output representing the alarm is simultaneously measured with this system. 
an actual Ethernet cable is connected to the ECG and the monitor counterpart is simulated in CANU to receive the heart rates via the respective Ethernet protocol like SDC, OPCUA or DDS. The VT system supports many different IOs like for example PWM or serial protocols like I2C, UART or SPI. An alternative to the VT system is our VIO system, which also allows for the early and extensive board level testing of your digital and analog IOs. This hill approach allows us to extensively and automatically test our final device, while taking benefit of the work we've already done in the SIL phase. With this development approach, it is possible to find bugs early and significantly increase your software and product quality. This video gave a short introduction on how to use the vector tool CANU for software in the loop and hardware in the loop testing and environment simulation in your embedded development process. Software in the loop allows you to perform early virtual system level tests that can be reused in the system tests on the target hardware during the hardware in the loop stage. Both approaches accelerate your development, increase your software quality and guarantee a high reusability of the developed code. If you want to know more about CANU and its simulation and testing features, do not hesitate to contact us. More info and links are in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. There are many more interesting tutorials on Canoe, Hill and Sill testing and other topics on the Vector Tech Tutorial channel. Subscribe now and activate notifications to not miss new videos.